Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, and I'm so excited today because, oh my God, we have an amazing guest on our show today. This is Andrea Donsky, and she is going to talk about menopause and premenopause, something that so many women, you know, struggle with and don't know a lot about, or they're just trying to figure out how do I get better? How do I get these symptoms to go away? And Andrea is here to tell you all about it. So I'm going to give the whole show to you, Andrea, you take it away. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me. This is great. And yes, I love talking about perimenopause and menopause. And the reason is, is because when I, you know, I've been in the health and wellness industry for a really long time, over 23 years. And I made my job, really, my job is about understanding my body. I'm a nutritionist and understanding how do I help others and educate others. But when I turned 47, I remember I had my first hot flash. And I was at my desk and I was like, whoa, 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 what is this? Am I in menopause? I'm like, I didn't even know the word perimenopause existed. I didn't even know what menopause meant. I just had heard the association between puff flashes and menopause, but I had been suffering with so many symptoms for years before. I thought it was five years, but I'm in the midst of writing a book now. And it's actually probably closer to 10 years that I had been, you know, I had been experiencing all these symptoms, including weight gain and then weight gain and loss and then mood, mood swings and mood, like rage raging, really, yeah. um, you know, uh, itchy ears, phantom smells, uh, you know, lots of bruising, body odor, like all of these things. And I was like, wait a minute, now it's all coming to like make sense as maybe, you know, what I've been going through is actually related to something called menopause. And that's what really led me down the rabbit hole of just doing so much research. And I'd already been an educator. It's my passion is to learn. And then when I learn, I share what I learned with everyone else. And that's what I've been doing for so long. So it was a natural transition for me to go from that health and wellness world to really focusing primarily on perimenopause and menopause. Oh, that's amazing. You know, I, so many women struggle with it. I actually started going through it at the age of 39 and I had no clue what the hell was happening. And my, my menstrual cycles weren't coming on time anymore. And when I did have them, they were really getting stretched out. Like I was almost two weeks, I was bleeding almost. And mm -hmm. I had no clue what was going on. And my, my menstrual cycle started getting heavier and I knew something was really wrong. Cause I'm, this, there was this, this, this older woman in front of me, she must've been like in her seventies, like late. 70s and she you know her energy level she's taking her time putting the groceries in and I'm just getting really impatient I'm a very laid-back person like you know I I just go with the flow but I was like I swear I got it I'm gonna knock this chick out if she doesn't hurry up and I'm like Stacy what the hell are you thinking <laughs> I'm like what is going on with me yeah. and it was just like a whole bunch of different things going on and my moods were all over the board but I had no clue what was happening until I went to see my doctor and my doctor said you are going into menopause you are in your perimental stage and you are headed right into menopause right now mm -hmm. and I was shocked because of my age well, so perimenopause, so yeah, that is definitely on the younger side. The average age of menopause is 51 and a half. Right. So we could start perimenopause, which are the years before. So we can go little definition. Perimenopause are the years before menopause. So right. they can last anywhere from a couple of months up to, you know, 12 plus years. I yeah. a woman, she was in perimenopause for 14 years. Wow. So it lasts a very long, it's a big window. It's generally about a decade before you go into menopause. Menopause is technically one day. So it's once you've gone 365 days or 12 months without a cycle, everything mm -hmm. after that is considered post-menopause. Right. Peri uh, po menopause, post-menopause, they're the same thing. So when I when we refer to it, it there really shouldn't be the word post-menopause because it confuses people. Yeah. People say, you know, a lot of women will be like, oh, I'm so past menopause. Well, no, once you're in menopause, you're in menopause for the rest of your life. So again, perimenopause, post-menopause, it's the same thing. Right. I, yeah. you know, I think so many women struggle with it and they don't know what to do. And like we were talking about before, some people don't even know that it's happening to them. And some people are getting the symptoms like the hot flashes and they're starting to feel the mood swings and, or they're going through their cycles and they're not normal anymore. And it's really disrupting their, their life. And a lot of them, I know for me too, I struggled with fatigue. All of a sudden I started, I got so tired. Like I, I couldn't even, I got to the point where I couldn't feel like I, I couldn't even roll out of bed. I was just like, and that was not me. That was not my personality. And I'm like, what is going on? I feel so tired. I can't get things done. 
my mood swings are all over the board and it, it's just a horrible feeling. And, you know, what do women do when they start feeling all these symptoms and they just don't know how to control it? You know, it's like, what's the next step? How do I get back to my old self? Cause that's all they want to feel. They want to get back to their old self. They don't want to have to feel these, these symptoms or go out to dinner and all of a sudden their face is turning red and they're, they're going like this and they're trying to get the air in or they're lying in bed and all of a sudden they feel the sweats. It's a, such a terrible feeling. Yeah. I mean, the number one thing is to start by understanding that you're in perimenopause. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes is because a lot of us don't really know if we're in perimenopause or not. Now there aren't, and, and part of it is that there isn't any testing. So you can't go to your doctor and go, Oh, can I get a test to tell me if I'm in perimenopause? Those, right. It doesn't exist unless you're going to a doctor and they're doing a series of tests, yes. right? So they could ask, they'll ask you questions like, okay, how old are you? Because you could start perimenopause as early as 35. So right. the doctor will ask you or your healthcare provider will say, how old are you? So they'll look at that. When did your mother go into menopause? It's not always, but genetics can play a role. You know, what are your symptoms? What are you experiencing? Are you a smoker, right? So they look at different things and that can help them determine whether or not you're in possibly in perimenopause or menopause. And generally we go through perimenopause in our forties and fifties. So like I said, the, you know, the average age of menopause is 51 and a half in North America. So that would be the first thing is to understand, okay, well, this is possibly it. And there are very common symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats and anxiety and low libido and vaginal dryness and all of these things that we know are related to it. And then there's a lot of uncommon symptoms, like for example, itchy ears. That is so common. It has to do with the fact that our estrogen levels are falling, our skin is thinning, and it becomes drier. So ears, you're, you know, you're scratching your ears a lot. That's always like, whoa, wait a minute. I've been having itchy ears for a while. For me, the most common, the most uncommon symptom for knowing if I was in peri or not were phantom smells. Phantom smells are when you smell things that other people aren't smelling. Right. So for example, the most common would be smoke, especially cigarette smoke or regular smoke, or it would be burnt coffee, burnt toast. These are things that you're smelling that nobody else in the room is smelling. So that would be something like, oh, always go get everything checked out. I always say you have to go think, go get your, you know, go get yourself checked out from a doctor because you never want to take a chance on anything. You want to go get yourself, get that clean bill of health. And then you're like, oh, okay, I got the clean bill of health. I think now this is like menopause or perimenopause symptoms. So there's BO, there's bruising, like there's a bunch of things that are less common. So I would say once you know that you're in that phase of life, then what you can do is you can look to things like nutrition, lifestyle, and supplements mm -hmm. to, you know, to kind of go back for one second before I go forward with those, what we're talking about is, you know, a lot of us are like, I just want to be like my old self. I just want to go back to the weight I was before. I just want to become, I don't want to be that, you know, that impatient person that's like, you know, you know, swearing under my breath in front, you know, <laughs> the person in front of me, who's a sweet lady. So it's like, what, what, how, do we go back to ourselves or is it finding newer versions of ourselves? Right. So it's right. like kind of coming into our own as we go into this phase of life to understand who we are. So one of my, the things I say a lot is, you know, what worked for us before menopause or perimenopause, it is like most probably it's not going to work for us now. Exactly. It has to do with so many things, whether it's exercise, whether it's what we're eating, whether it's the supplements we're taking, whether it's our thinking or, you know, how we manage our stress levels, like all of that is tied in. So I, you know, this phase of life is a really good opportunity to reevaluate our, our life, reevaluate what we're doing, understand, okay, this isn't working for me so much anymore. I'm going to change it. And now I'm going to do this. So it's a really good time for reflection and to say, okay, let's see what we can, let's, pa let's pave that path for what we want it to look for, you know, moving forward. Right. So, I, you know, those are things to keep in mind. And the other thing I always say is to be gentle with yourself because as our bodies are recalibrating, which is what, it's, what we're doing, think about a cell phone. You have your cell phone, it's upgrading its software. Can you use your cell phone when your software is upgrading? No, right? Exactly. You have to be patient. You have to yeah. wait it out. And then you're like, like, you're like, come on, hurry up, hurry up. It's the same thing, right? So as our bodies are changing, they're recalibrating. We need to be patient with ourselves, show ourselves grace, show ourselves patient, be patience. Because for a lot of us, and I know me, and, and the reason I say this is because this, I did all this stuff. I wasn't patient with myself. I would speak to myself so negatively. I'd be like, what is wrong with you? You know, you are like type A personality. And now you can't even get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Why can't you focus? You're an entrepreneur. You have so many different companies. You can't even like put your feet on the ground because you are so exhausted or you have exactly. no focus or no concentration. So it's really about understanding that A, it's temporary, it does get better, but understanding that we need to provide ourselves with that self-love, that grace, that patience as our bodies are going through it. 100%.
Like I even remember like when I started going through and I started to experience all these symptoms, you know, I, I went to my GYN and they were like, well, we can give you birth control. I'm like, my tubes are tied. I said, why would I want to go on birth control? And why would I even want to experience the side effects, the common side effects that most women get with birth control? So for me, I went to a functional medicine doctor. They did a thorough blood work on me and they were able to determine where I was. And, you know, they were saying you're on the cusp going into menopause, but you are in perimenopause, but you're headed right to, to it, you know, because they were looking at my hormone cycle. They were looking at my, my estrogen, my testosterone, and they were looking at, you know, my progesterone levels. And I had bare, you know, my estrogen was normal, but my testosterone and my progesterone was barely there. It was like 0.05, you know, so it was like really, really, really low. So, you know, for me, they looked at what vitamins I was deficient in. They looked at, you know, what supplements I was lacking. And so I did hormone therapy, which helped me tremendously. But not everybody knows hormone therapy and not everybody can do hormone therapy because it depends on, you know, if you have medical conditions also, it may not be for you. You know, you have to really consider this. It's not for everybody, but it's great when you can, you know, there's so many other things out there, so many supplements, so many foods, everything, you know, that can actually help with, you know, perimenopause and menopause that lots of women don't even know about. There's so many different things that you could do, even teas or supplements, they have them out there, you know, and they could actually help you. Yeah, absolutely. So I always say, you know, we have tools in our toolbox. And as a nutritionist, my tools in my toolbox are nutrition, lifestyle, and supplements. There's also hormones. That's out of my lane. So that's not something that I talk about because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a hormone expert. Right. And um, I feel like I leave that to the experts, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is we can actually do both. We can use my toolbox and we can use their toolbox and bring everything together, right? Right, so exactly. Can be combined. There's nothing to say that we can't use, of course, you know, everything, making sure that, you know, you're checking it out with a healthcare professional provider is you, you can use supplements with, and I've interviewed so many OBGYNs who are menopause specialists who say, yes, absolutely. We recommend you know certain supplements when you're taking, uh, when you're taking hormones or you're doing other things. So I say, and you want to be on par, you know, on, you want to be spot on with your nutrition because oh, if yeah. you are on, you know, other medications or whatever it is, certain things can exacerbate your symptoms, right? Or they can. hundred percent. So yeah. I always say that there's no panacea of anything. There's no one thing that is going to be, and it might be for some people, but for the majority of us, we do need a combination of different things. So yes. when I focus on nutrition, lifestyle and supplements, I'm focusing on whole foods diet, your whole foods diet. So what does that mean? Eating foods is nature intended. It's not saying don't eat processed foods. And we need to, I need to be very clear with my language because olive oil is processed. We're, I'm talking about avoiding ultra processed foods, foods that don't have, that don't have any nutrition, don't have any nutrients in it, right? That yes. don't have much for us in this phase of life. Right. Being full of, you know, um, ultra processed sugar, ultra processed carbohydrates, alcohol, caffeine, too much caffeine can exacerbate symptoms. You know, for yes. me, I can't even have chocolate at night before bed because it's going to, I'm going to have a ton of night sweats and mm -hmm. I, I might, and my hot flashes and night sweats are controlled. So, you know, there are things that can exacerbate them. So focusing on whole foods is important. Focusing on protein, focusing on good quality fats like olive, avocado, coconut oil, ghee, butter, grass-fed butter. These are all, you know, health, you know, they're good for us. Yeah. Uh, you want to look at green vegetables, eating the rainbow because all the different colors have the different phytochemicals in it that provide yes. nutrients for us. You want to look at fruits, your low glycemic fruits. You want to look at, you know, your yellow bananas, which have the resistant starch. You want to look at your berries, your, you know, sour apples. I mean, we want to incorporate all of these colorful fruits and veggies in our diet, not only because of the nutrients, but also because they have fiber. We yes. need 25 to 35 grams of fiber in this lifetime and in, in uh, per day in this phase of life. So, yes. so these are all things that we want to consider, take into consideration. If you want to have your car complex carbohydrates, some people do, some people don't. I never judge either way. Um, as long as you are getting some type of carbohydrates through your vegetables, very important. But some people don't do well with starch. Some people gain weight. Some people, it affects their blood sugar in different ways. So, But if you choose to have it, more in moderation, nuts and seeds, more in moderation. The same thing with uh, legumes, again, if that's something that you choose to have. Right. So that's kind of like when we think of a menopausal or perimenopausal nutrition, we think of that in terms of nutrition, that's really what we want to focus on making sure we're hydrated, making sure we're drinking a lot. We're more dry in this phase of life. So focusing on managing our stress, really important. Again, oh, yeah. this is the lifestyle part of it. 
which is focusing on stress. Matt, we're all, you know, for many of us, we're always in that sympathetic mode, right? So we're like, mm -hmm. go, 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 stress, 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 chronic stress. Stress is good. Chronic stress is not great for us, right? Exactly. So we want to make sure that we are doing, incorporating some type of, what I, I, you know, some type of, some type of like daily stress management that you can put into your life, whether that's walking in nature, whether that's taking a walk around the block, whether it's watching a funny movie, whether right. it's movement in general, very important, right? The weight bearing exercises. So all of that is important because we need to kind of have that dance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. That's yeah. our rest and digest. That's when our body can repair itself. So really managing stress plays a big role because cortisol, when we're stressed, I, I was looking for my prop, when mm -hmm. we're stressed, our adrenal glands release stress hormones, including cortisol. And cortisol can have an effect on so many different things, including weight, including sleep, right? So yes. it comes into effect for a lot of different ways. So those two, crucial. And then yes. we go into the supplements, which again is another area that I've spent a lot of time researching and we can talk about some of those. And so for me, that is my toolbox of how we need to work it. And, and everything works synergistically, in my opinion. And I noticed too, like for me personally, when I started going through perimenopause and I was headed towards menopause, my cortisol le levels shot up. You know, yeah. it used to be normal. It wasn't normal anymore. It was high when, once I started going through the menopausal symptoms. Yeah. So we become more prone to inflammation, more prone to st like to stress, more prone to not being able to cope with stress the way we yeah. used to. Everything mm -hmm. kind of gets off a little bit. Everything kind of comes off. So it's again, learning how to manage it now that we're in this straight in this stage of life is really important. Exactly. So rethinking how we live, what we do, what we're eating, how we're exercising, all of that is really crucial. Yeah. I think it's so important. It's so it's I think, you know, people really need to educate themselves more on it. And I think I, you know, it's funny because sometimes I would speak to people that were going through menopause or they're going through perimenopause. And they don't really understand what it entails. And I think it's so important for people to, you know, really do the research and get the research, you know, from, you know, actual, you know, re resourceful, you know, um, either websites or jur medical journals or, you know, places where, you know, scientific evidence shows, you know, X, Y, and Z, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they know what menopause is, they know what perimenopause is, but they really don't know the facts. And I think it's so important that they understand the facts. And, and also, like you mentioned, is, which is a very important fact is, is how we live, the foods we put in our body, how we treat our body, you know, we really, it, it affects the, the menopausal symptoms. It really does. And this is an area which I find interesting because a lot of us don't want to hear that, right? Like we're like, wait a minute, I love my artificial sweeteners in my coffee, or I love having my soup that has MSG or my chips, or whatever <laughs> it is, right? Like, and, and the reason why I focus on those is because I wrote a book called Unjunk Your Junk Food. It was uh, published by Simon & Schuster out of New York back in 2011. So I've been doing this a really long time. I am an expert label reader when it comes to food, now when it comes to supplements as well. And for me, we coined a term called something called the scary seven, which are the, you know, the seven categories of ingredients that we know cause, can harm, cause harm to human health. And we, you know, we, we did all the research on it. We looked at the medical journals. We had fact checkers, you know, who helped us with our book. And now that I'm in menopause, I'm revisiting all of it. And we even added an eighth category, which is called seed oils from the work of Dr. Kate Shanahan, MD, who's amazing. Mm -hmm. And we know that there are a group of, a group of, additives or preservatives that we know aren't great for us in this phase of life. So for example, yeah. if you look at the side effects of MSG, monosodium glutamate, first of all, there are over 40 different names for MSG, autolyzed yeast extract, yeast extract, and the list goes on and on. And you can, you can even go to naturallysavvy.com. You can Google it, scary seven, it'll all come up. And we know that the side effects of MSG are excessive sweating, heart palpitations, migraines. I mean, does that sound familiar? Uh, yeah, these are symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. You know, same thing with artificial sweeteners, something like an aspartame, migraines, headaches, like, so there's, you know, increased anxiety, like there's, so there's so many connections between the side effects of these ingredients and being in perimenopause and menopause, which is now where a lot of my research and focus is going because that's the world I came from. Like that's yes. the, I wrote three books on the to on topic of label rating. And now I'm like, wait a second, let's take a closer look and look at it from the lens of a menopausal woman. How are these ingredients affecting us? And whether, you know, 
you know, I always say we look at the N of one or we look at like, we look at ourselves, right? Yes, it could be written in the medical journals that we know those are side effects of those ingredients, but how is it affecting you? Like, even if someone will negate you and say, oh, that's not true. There's a lot of great research behind artificial sweeteners. It's good for you. It's fine. Well, how do you feel when you're chewing a piece of gum that has three different types of artificial sweeteners? Do you get right. a headache? Does your anxiety increase? Do you get some heart? Like, so what is it that, how do you feel? And then I always say, tweak it according to how you feel. Yeah. And you might mindful of what you're putting in your body. We know that seed oils like canola, corn, cotton seeds, soy, safflower, sunflower, um, and um, grape seed oil, mm -hmm. we know, according to Dr. Kate Shanahan, increase inflammation in the body. Yeah. So if you take them out of your diet, which I did when I interviewed her, after I interviewed her, I'm like, oh, I'm a nutritionist. I wrote three books on the topic of label reading. I know how to read a label. I was eating seaweed from Costco that had sunflower oil in it. And she was like, go, you know, make sure you go read your labels. And I found yes. it. I was getting pain at the bottom of my feet. Literally, I took it out within a couple of weeks, the pain was gone. I'm like, oh my gosh, seed oils. Like it was something that didn't even register with me until I interviewed her. And I was like, okay, we added it to our list. Now it's, you know, scary eight or whatever. We haven't really coined the term, but it's literally being mindful of what we're putting in our body and on our body. We absorb 60% of what we put on our body. So if you're putting the same things on your body and you're getting inflammation, you know, you may not, you may, you know, seeing how you feel, that's important, avoiding products that have parabens and phthalates. So we just want to make sure that we're just mindful. And that's how yes. I always say, just be mindful. How do you feel when you're eating this or you're putting this on your body and go from there? Because that was one of my biggest things was inflammation. I struggled with that, you know, and it was funny because I could, like you said, I could eat one thing. And it didn't agree with my body. And the next day I looked like I was in my first trimester and the water would just, I can get like four to five to six pounds of water just from something I ate the night before, you know, it, and because it plays such an important factor. People don't realize that because if when I have people talk to me, their biggest problem is inflammation, inflammation. And especially with a woman, inflammation, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible feeling. And when you have inflammation, it also can, it could also can cause joint pain. And it can cause lots of other things, you brain know, fog, it can brain cause fog. So yeah. Many different things. And you have enough of brain fog when you're going through menopause, you don't need any more on top of that, you know? <laughs> exactly. And it causes weight gain. Like it leads to so many different things. And sometimes yeah. we feel that inflammation. Like I have a lot of women will, that will tell me, and we'll talk about the research that I've done, but a lot of women will say they have bone, like their bones ache them. So we hear a lot of joint pain and muscle pain, but we hear a lot of joint, like as if their bones are aching them. Like it's like that to the core of their body of how much pain they're in. Yeah. So doing something, I always say, you know, there are, you know, Eating an anti-inflammatory diet is definitely, you know, Google it. There's great books on it um, that you can follow the anti an anti-inflammatory diet. My friend Julie Danilock wrote a book, or a few books, one is a, one of them being Meals That Heal Inflammation. So there's some great, you know, books out there on it. And um, you know, so just being mindful, but at the same time, because we're more prone to it in this phase of life, you just want to be that extra kind of aware of what you're putting in your body. So like, is this going to create inflammation or not? And sometimes we feel it, like I said, you know, from our, into the bones, sometimes you don't even realize it, that it actually can be connected to brain fog, which is by the way, the number two most common symptom in perimenopause and menopause, according to almost 3000 women that we surveyed. Yeah, it's it's big, you know, what brain fog and not having clarity, you know, is is very big when it comes to the foods that you're eating. And a lot of women, especially in menopause, have talked about that. And, and yeah. even people that aren't in menopause have the same problem, you know, they, you know, and it has, you know, they don't realize how important food is, you know, and, and what we put in our body plays a huge role. And if you're struggling with something like menopause, you have more symptoms to deal with and you're just you're just making those symptoms worse by using cert, putting certain foods in your in your body and a lot of people don't read the labels that's the problem you know you have misled information in the marketing of of the product that makes it look so great and so healthy but then you look at the ingredients and i always say if you can't say the word then it obviously isn't good for you you know and that's the this, that's the best way you know to check an ingredients if you're not really well educated when and it comes to like certain foods and what's bad, what's not. And if you're looking at the ingredients and you can't pronounce it, obviously you can't, you know, can't it's not good for you. You know, I tell people.
or if there's an entire like long list, like if you yes. can have like five, six ingredients and you understand them. Yeah. Great. Cause sometimes there are words like, you know, B vitamins or B5 that isn't so easy to pronounce, but it's more right. just it's like that long list. And yes. then you see at the end and it has like, you know, food coloring and like, you know, all these different things in it. You're like, mm, maybe this isn't the best choice, but the reason I wrote on junk, your, on junk, your junk food in 2011 was because I wanted to have as a nutritionist, I'm also a realist. And I know that if you're craving a piece of chocolate, you're not going to want a celery stick. Like, let's be honest. Right? <laughs> like, it's just, it's just not going to happen. It's not you know, happen. And the same for me, right? So I was like, when I wrote on Junk Your Junk Food, it was like finding healthier options to what the foods that we would normally want to eat. So if you're going to have that piece of chocolate, have a piece of dark chocolate, right? Just avoid exactly. the chocolate perhaps that, you know, has other things in it that may not be so healthy for us. So it's about making those healthier choices. And especially as we go into perimenopause and menopause, it's like that 80, 20 rule. I'm not going to tell you never, never, I'm going to tell you, be mindful and try to keep to that 80, 20 rule. And if you don't feel good doing it, then maybe it's closer to a 90, 10, or maybe it's doing the best you can do. Right. So right. I just, I don't come from a place of judgment. I really come from a place of education and being mindful exactly. and just trying to say, like, listen to yourself, because there are a lot of people out there that will say, do this, do that, follow this, follow that. I just believe we're so unique and individual that it's very hard to say everybody should be on keto or everyone should do paleo or everyone should be vegan because we are all unique and different. And what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. So it's hard to say that, you know? Yes, a hundred percent. And I think that's one main thing that people have to realize that you, you hear these trends and you hear all these different things, but everybody reacts differently. And that's one thing that people have to understand is that what, like you said, what works for you may not work for my body. And that's perfectly, you know, normal, you know, because everybody's body reacts differently and we all have a different medical history behind us too. So you have to take that into tackle. Also. And genetics, genetics, and genetics. Play a huge. Role. Yes. A hundred percent. Genetics play a big role for me. I can't digest starch. I have a more, if I eat a lot of starch, then I have a more, a, a bigger chance of developing diabetes. So like for my body in particular, and you'll hear a lot of people out there saying like, you know, eat your carbohydrates, go eat your cake, go eat this. And it's like, again, it may not be good for everybody. Maybe for you, it's okay. For me, unfortunately, my genetics don't allow it. So I, I'm, I'm very mindful of not being a generalist because in terms mm -hmm. of like, you know, in, no, sorry, not being, a, maybe it's more of a specific ish. <laughs> I don't know, I have to like get the actual word, but like I'm yeah. not saying you can or can't do this or that because everybody's different. So you got the genetics and then you also got the, like, the predispos predispositions, but also like, I'll give you a good example because of my genetics. When I had gained a lot of weight in peri, I'm a nutritionist. I'm always trying different diets, different ways of eating. It's just, it's, I love to experiment. That's probably one of my favorite things to do on myself. And then I always, you know, ask everyone else what they're doing. And for me, I was like, oh, maybe I should try doing a keto diet. And I was like, okay, let me try keto. And I did keto. Can I tell you within a few days, I was so nauseous because genetically I can't absorb a lot of fat. Keto is a very high fat diet, very, yes. very low carb, very high fat diet. So what I did was like, okay, well, I can't do keto. Cause if I have more than 28 grams or 30 grams of fat a day, saturated fat, I'm like, no, I'm literally nauseous. Yeah. So my, my, my liver just doesn't like it. It's not happy. Right. A hundred percent. I, I kind of like adapt it. So again, you can do an adaptation of different diets. If you're like, Hey, listen, I like the concept of the lower carb. Let me try a paleo. Let me mix and match and do this, do what's right for you. You know, exactly. create your own diet that works for you and just be mindful of, you know, just be mindful of how you feel. And that's really my biggest thing is don't look to any one person as the person that knows everything because it's exactly that person knows what's good maybe for their genetics and what's good for them, but maybe not for yours. So I'm just very mindful of that and try to be very open-minded and try to, you know, really encourage everyone to do their own research and to listen to their bodies. I think that's a great comment. You know, people have to realize, you know, when they, you know, person knows it all and what's, you know, the advice they're given might be great for them, but not, might not be great for you. And you have to keep that in your mindset. Yeah. Now, you know, I, you mentioned that you came out with some products that it took you a long time to put the, them together because you wanted the best possible products and healthy ingredients and, and so forth for people with menopause. Can you tell me a little about those products? Sure. So when I developed my hot flashes and I was to a point where I just couldn't function anymore, like I looked at my husband one day and I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work for me. Like <laughs> if this is it, like I just, yeah, it's not going to work for me. Like I was like right. so adamant about that. And I was like, I, I said to my, I looked at him. I said, I said, I am on a mission from this day forward. I will find 
natural supplements or supplements that work to help my hot flashes. At that time, we weren't even talking about hormone therapy the way we are today. This was, you know, many years ago. It was in yeah. 2017. So for me, I was like, okay, so I'm going to find the supplements that work and that help me. So I literally went down the experiment experimentation path and I tried so many different ingredients. Some of them, by the way, that even caused harm to my body. So we, I was like, and I didn't, you know, I, I, I tried them, I experimented with them and I'm like, I'm going to find something or find a group of in, you know, ingredients and products that I know I would be okay taking them myself. I'm happy. I, you know, that work, they're efficacious, but they yes. are good for me. And they also find fall within my you know, my whole line of thinking of having those cleaner options. Like I don't want to take supplements that have titanium dioxide in it. I don't want to take supplements that have, you know, coloring or hydrogenated oils in it. I just don't. Right. So that led me down to do my research to come up with our line, which is called Morphus. You could see right here. So my mm -hmm. company is called Morphus, Morph, like metamorphosis, us as a community. And that's, we made up the word. That's how we came up with the word with our, with our company name. So when we launch our supplements, which are the same, so they're called Morphous supplements by women for women, plus, plus by women in menopause. So we came up with different products that we know that would be beneficial to many women. So yeah. for example, we have our foundation supplements. I always say like as women in menopause, cause I'm asked all the time, what should I be taking Andrea? And there are so many nuances with supplements, which I've learned. There's just as in the food, like Stacey, you probably know this, but just as in the food world, in the supplement world, the misleading marketing, marketing is rampant. Like it's rapid. what's the quality of your ingredients? And I heard that for this was a, not too long ago because we have a product we're in the midst of doing right now called Sleep Us, which will be out soon that helps with cortisol and sleep. It's amazing. And, you know, I heard the, the term fairy dust. You don't want to, you know, you know, our products do not have any fairy dust in it. What's fairy dust? Really cheap ingredients, right? So yes. everything that we're using is branded, has research. It's because I vetted it myself. I have done the, gone down the rabbit hole of information. I'm like, if we use this long-term, will it have any effect on our livers? Like I literally, <laughs> I, as much as I can, dot, you know, cr dotted my eyes, crossed my T's to try to figure out, you know, supplements that are safe for us, for the majority of us, obviously, everybody's right. So even if you take magnesium, maybe your body doesn't like it, but I'm talking the majority of us, the average. Right. So, you know, coming up with something like magnesium, I love magnesium. Why? Because most of us are deficient yes. and there's so many different types of magnesium. So we chose to launch with magnesium, primarily glycinate with a tiny bit of oxide. Now mm -hmm. oxide gets a bad rap. If you take it in a large dosage on its own, Yes, you will have loose stools. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Right. Ours has primarily uh, glycine, glycinate. Why do we like glycinate? Because glycine is amino acid that's attached to the magnesium that helps you to fall asleep. It helps to relax your body. We the, the reviews on our magnesium is unbelievable. Like I don't even want to say it on here because it's inappropriate. One of the words was like, this stuff is effing magic. Yeah. <laughs> so we chose that because I know it works, right? So we've done our, we have another product coming out called Sleep Us. It should be out very shortly. And this contains ingredients that help to re, it, it resets our HPA access. So it helps. So if we have that chronic stress, the cortisol elevation, yes. it helps to reset it. So our body's not continuously sick. So our, our adrenals, it gives our adrenals a break. It's not continuously secreting that cortisol. It helps us to sleep well. It has a little bit of melatonin, which I absolutely love yes. as we get into this phase of life. It is so, it, the research on it for women in menopause are just amazing. It's amazing. So we know it's not addictive. We know it's not habit forming. We know that it's safe. So we literally, you know, we, we've tried to really uncover the best quality ingredients for us in this phase of life. We have dim, we have berberine, which is something not a lot of people know about. I love berberine Yes, thing for like blood sugar regulation mood. It's an antioxidant an antiviral, like it's fabulous. And then we have our signature product, which is called fiber S. So mm -hmm. this is a soluble prebiotic fiber. It's unbelievable. It's a powder that completely dissolves, no taste, no grit, no smell, nothing. It doesn't thicken. You can put it in any food, hot or cold, and you're getting six grams of soluble fiber per serving. It won't cause gas. It won't cause bloating. So as you could see, like, I'm so mindful of what we do and what we put out to make sure, okay, does it have the effective dosage in it? Does it have enough of those ingredients? A lot of companies will have proprietary formulas and won't tell you, you know, what's in it. I am like, you have a question, ask me, I will be, we are very open about what's in our products and we want to make sure that it works for you, which is why we launched Morphous. Like I just, I'd had enough trying everything else. I'm like, no, I'm going to do my own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, and I'm comfortable because I'm like, okay, I vet it. And I know it, I, I, I'm happy to take it myself and recommend it to people I love 
Right. That's what, we, that's what we sell amorphous. I think that's great. You know, cause nowadays so many people, you see companies that they have fillers and it drives me nuts and, you know, or they put very cheap, you know, types of supplements or they don't put really a, the amount that they're supposed to, you know, in order for it to be as, as efficient. Is big. Big. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to look at the research for the dosage. So you might say, oh, my product has, I'm just going to think it, my product has, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example. I, I don't know. Whatever. Let's just say 30 milligrams of, milligrams of whatever. But if the yeah. research shows that it takes 200 milligrams to get that effective, you know, thing that you're trying to do, well, then what's the 30 milligrams going to do? Like, it's not exactly, so you're going to say it on the front of your bottle that this helps with reducing inflammation or whatever it is. You have to be careful. Number one, you can't make claims that a, you can't substantiate. And yeah. we're also, we're also based in Canada. So we sell our products are sold in the U S but because a lot of, uh, we come from Canada, we know what, you know, health Canada has very strict rules with when it comes to saying things or making certain, you know, saying certain things that your product will do. So yeah. you have to be really careful that if you're going to say that, you know, and again, the U S has very different regulations, but you have to be very mindful of what you say, because if you're only putting 30, but the dosage that shows that it helps to do that specific action is 250 or 300 milligrams. Again, that's fairy dust, right? So you yes. just have to be very mindful of that, that why you're taking it. And I always tell people to like, Ladies, when you're taking a supplement or whatever, anything that you're doing or taking or eating or whatever, do you, I guess mostly for supplements, like, do you understand why you're taking it? Like, why exactly. do you want to take this product? And don't just take it because someone or me tells you to take it. Like, I want you to understand. I'm so much about the education because yes. I want to empower you. I want you to understand what it is. Why am I taking, okay, I don't sleep that well. So I'm going to take magnesium glycinate to help me sleep better. Okay. That makes sense. Right. Or right. I'm going to your sleep as product manager, because I want to sleep better. I want to help my cortisol levels because I'm waking up between two and 4 a.m. So I really try to go that extra distance to try to help you to understand why it is you want a specific, a specific product or ingredients. And I think that's so important. People have to understand when they're taking something, why they're taking it. They shouldn't just take it because someone suggests it to them or even a doctor suggesting it to them. They should really know what is in it and, you know, and understand it, you know, and, and, you know, be, and decide for themselves that this is something they really need, because I've had suggestions from doctors and, and other people, you know, oh, you should really be taking this. Well, I'm like, you know, I don't think that's going to be a good idea for my body. Cause I know how my body reacts and that's not going to be good for me, you know, and you have to go with your, you know, your gut feeling or your, your education, you know, or, if you've tried something similar and it didn't work for you, you know, and it has similar ingredients in it. So why, you know, sometimes you have to just go with what your, what your knowledge is and what your gut is, and then also do some research on it. You know, I always say do research and make sure you, you're getting your research from resourceful websites or books. People you trust. And that's people the important trust. thing, right? Yes. You know, I, I, when it comes to supplements in particular, I've had people who say, oh, I've tried that, but it didn't work for me. And I'm like, okay, so let's, let's dig a little deeper. How much do you try it? Was it a proprietary formula? Did you actually get the dosage you need? You know, what, what was it? Was it sustained release? Was it not? Well, yes. What was it like, you know, so there's so many questions or just like anything when it comes to food, when it comes to products, there's going to be different grades, different quality. Yes. And if you tried something and a lot of companies are not going to tell you in a lot of cases, what the quality is, if you don't know what that quality is, and then you've said, okay, I've tried it and it didn't work for me. Well, maybe try a different brand, maybe try a brand that you recommend, maybe try taking more or less of it. Right. So hundred percent plays a huge role. Right. So I just feel like, you know, understanding your supplements as well as you understand your food or your other products you're taking is so key. And I'm really on a mission to help educate women in perimenopause and menopause to understand what the, what supplements are taking, why, and looking for good quality supplements. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. I took a supplement um, and, it, and it didn't work for me. Now I, I took the same exact supplement, but one had a different coating on it. And the other one had a different coating on it. One coating um, was a, it was a faster time release. So what the outside of the coating uh, evaporated quicker. So it released through my body a lot quicker. So it didn't give me a prime effect. It didn't really do what it was supposed to because it just went right through my body because the outside coating was made differently and it probably wasn't. didn't even break down. 
It probably didn't even break down. And the second coating was a better coating and it was made, it was the actual brand that was highly recommended that originally was formulated, one of the first companies. And it had, um, the time release was a lot slower. So it stood in my body longer and the effect was, a lot, it was a hundred percent more positive. Uh, it actually worked where the other one didn't work. Same ingredients, different coating on the outside of the pill. Big, yeah, and, and that's difference. a great, and it's a huge difference and it's a great point. And by the way, as we go into perimenopause and menopause, let's say you're taking a supplement and I don't know what format it was in, but let's say you're taking a supplement that's in a tablet form, right? Right. Tablets don't break down as well for us as let's say something like a capsule would, yes. right? So mm -hmm. you have to be, because our digestive system is changing and shifting and we don't have as much hydrochloric acid or perhaps enzymes as we did before. So understanding the format is really important too, because how we absorb, does this supplement have a specific technology? Like there's a supplement called DIM. I love methane. It's great for women in this phase of life, especially in peri. And it's, you're on hormone therapy. It's something to speak to your doctor about. Yes. And it helps with estrogen metabolites. And I had a girlfriend who was taking a very cheap form of DIM. She bought it for like a very cheap amount on Amazon. And, and again, be careful when you're buying on Amazon, make sure you're buying from the actual seller. Really important. Yes. Um, so, you know, she bought it and it didn't work for her. It didn't get absorbed until she switched to our DIM. And now it's like, okay, it gets absorbed. We have a special technology that actually helps you absorb it better. So yes. these are all the little things to keep in mind, you know, when you're buying supplements, making sure that, Hey, is it for women in perimenopause and menopause? Because yes. if it's not for this specific phase of life, and even though, even so dig deeper, even if it's like, Hey, this is for women in perimenopause, is this ingredient right for me? Yeah. It's really important. So that's kind of how I look at it. And I think that's a great point. And I think people have to really realize that, you know, and, and be a little bit more open-minded when they're, and make sure that they are all, also, like you said, also be well-educated when it comes to, um, understanding. And also, you know, if you're going to go see a doctor about this, or if you have questions to ask somebody, keep a list of questions. Cause you, you know, you ha can't always rely on, on one person or a doctor, even you have to have a list of questions and be your own doctor. So I say, do the research have, you know, uh, make a bunch of questions and then ask the reliable source that, you know, is knowledgeable, knowledgeable and actually knows the, the answers that, you know, if you're going to see a nutritionist, well, make a list, do research before you go see a nutritionist, make and ask the, the nutritionist all these questions, you know, and then, you know, find out because sometimes what you read on the internet may not be true. And, you know, they'll correct you and they'll guide you in the right way, you know, so you have to really be your own doctor first and then go to the resource that can actually give you the actual answers or the appropriate answers. And it's so confusing, you know, it's, I, I'll see, you know, I'm on TikTok very much and I, or quite often, and I'll see people, they're trying to like sell a supplement and they're like, don't take this supplement. And A, they don't tell you like, the nuances of it, right? They're just, and then they scare everybody and there's so much fear mongering and it just, it, that upsets me. It, it's kind of like, well, A, what phase of life are you talking about? B, what type of supplement are you talking about? B, like, show me the research. Like, it's just, you know, it's just, exactly. and, that's where, and that's where I feel like there's so much information. It's like information. Misinformation, overload, yeah. Misinformation, information overload. And it's just like, you know, just focus ladies. If you're in perimenopause or menopause, you're over the age of 35, you know, 35, 40, then, you know, like start taking care of your adrenal, start taking care of your stress, focus on your nutrition, your lifestyle, incorporate certain, you know, uh, supplements that we know are helpful. Your omega threes. I'm a big fan of your magnesium. I'm a big fan of your fiber. I'm a big fan of, which is why we decided to launch all of those <laughs> mm -hmm. because these are all foundation supplements that we yes. should all, you know, taking on a regular basis. So, and again, you can't out, out supplement good nutrition. I want you to focus on that nutrition. You will never tell me to say, you'll never hear me say, take my supplements, but don't eat well. No, you have to eat well. You have to manage your stress as much as you can. And then obviously, you know, you add your supplements in as a supplementation, right? Exactly. And that is, yeah. Now, where can they find your supplements and where can they find your website too? Yeah. So our website is wearemorphous.com. And so it's W-E-A-R-E-M-O-R-P-H-U-S. So wearemorphous.com. Just think metamorphosis, morph, um, dot com. And then all of our supplements on our website. So you oh, can find awesome. them all there. And then I'm on TikTok. You can follow me on TikTok. We're on Instagram. I'm on TikTok as Andrea Donsky. And then on, on uh, Instagram as we are Morphous and Andrea Donsky. And I heard you have an amazing TikTok um, following also that, that people really, really find it very interesting. 
I try to have fun. It's really fun. I try, you know, I really try to, I always say TikTok is like my creative outlet. I've been able to like take my silliness and really put it into like creating funny videos. So I do a lot of funny videos. I do a lot of videos with my husband. I do a lot of educational videos. So we try to do, um, you know, a mix of different things, but thank you. I try. It's my <laughs> I just, I'm silly. I like to be silly and we have to have fun, right? Yes. Like I can't take myself so seriously, which is why I have my whole hot flash mode videos in there. I mean, whatever, you know, like I remember being on, Instagram and I would like not want to post because my hair there was like a hair out of place. <laughs> TikTok, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like I really go out of my way to make myself look extra, you know, special there. So and it's just it's having fun and just being, you know, being who you are, being authentic to who you are. And I think that's so important, especially as we get older. We have to really feel, you know, comfortable with who we are and not worry so much what others think about us. And as long as you're comfortable in your own two shoes, then that's all that matters is that you have to feel good about yourself. Yeah. And it's a work in progress, by the way. Like that is something that I feel like if you if you're there and you're like, I don't give a shit what I'm can I say it? Can I swear? Was I like Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you're like, if I don't give a shit, sorry, I like to swear. So I just had to, I should have asked you before. Um, if you're like, I don't give a shit what people think about me, like I'm always so in awe. I'm like, oh my God, you're amazing. Like I am, it's like I am working on that to get there. So we're all a work in progress. Yes. We're all we all need to be gentle with ourselves and understand that, you know, we're doing the work. We're doing the work. Sometimes it takes us longer than others to whatever it is we're doing. Yeah. But the important thing is to just be conscious and mindful and, you know, seeing where it takes you. Right. Oh, a hundred percent. Definitely. Oh my God. This has been amazing, Andrea. I loved having you on the show. You, you just gave us a world of information that I think is going to be so important for people is, you know, going through menopause or going through perimenopause and just, you know, people either who are just starting to feel the symptoms or have been going through the symptoms and just don't know what to do. I just, or just want to get rid of a few of those symptoms that keep coming back like hot flashes, you know, or fatigue or, or whatever the case may be. So this has been a, such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time. And Thank I, you for having me. It was so nice to meet you. Oh, it's so nice to meet you too. And I'm definitely going to be trying your supplements soon because I could use a few of them myself. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too.